Bob Gates, the memoir, Duty, right? What is, I forget the exact, the whole. Duty's the title. I'm, duty, yeah. something about, uh, uh, d- d- for one, one word does it, duty. Sure. The charges against President Obama, let's talk about them, and, and Vice President Biden. First of all, with President Obama, he says he didn't trust the, the, the most explosive charge seems to be, he didn't trust the, our mission in Afghanistan. He supported the troops, but he sent them on a mission that he really didn't believe in. Is that big news? In some ways, it's big news. It's big news because it's criticism from a former Secretary of Defense of a sitting president as far as his mission um, and and his belief in the mission goes. So it's big news in that the criticism is um, pointed and and it's significant to kind of the continuing outcome of that war. Um, It's not particularly new news to many people in the Pentagon um, that the president um, was not as uh, sold out on the mission of the Afghanistan war. Um, for him, he cared more about bringing the troops home, um, and he kind of changed his his view on Afghanistan. He came in in 2008 talking about the troop surge and supporting that war over Iraq, which he said was right. not where the troops should right. be. And so that was kind of his focus coming into office. And then um, he ended up not really believing in the mission, according to uh, Secretary Gates's book, um, and caring more about bringing the troops out um, after about 2009. But the reason I ask if this is really news, because no Number one, we knew that President Obama opposed the war in Iraq, you know, Absolutely. ever since 2002 when he gave that speech as a state senator in Chicago. Uh, and on the war in Afghanistan, he said basically this was a good war versus a bad war, whether or not he used those phrases. But he certainly wasn't saying we're in Afghanistan and we're going to be there forever. I mean, he, we all knew he had questions about what we were doing in Afghanistan. So to me, for Gates to say, you know, he questioned our mission – yeah, maybe that was his job, right? Good yeah, question, the mission. absolutely. And the reason that it's kind of picked up so much buzz is for the commander in chief to not to kind of be going through the motions on on a war and, and continuing to have troops in a place that he didn't feel like they should be necessarily. That that's kind of the the meat of the criticism. Well, th- what to me the in, the best insight about what Gates was getting at in this is he pray in the book he praises President Bush. For never looking back and never having any doubts and never even questioning, right, for, uh, the his decision to invade Iraq. So if, if that is the standard, right, uh, there certainly was a different standard when President Obama got into office, right? You know, and I don't know, just speaking for myself, I... I I, I prefer a president who raises tough questions and, and you know, doesn't say, you know, we're, we're going to war and that's the right decision and I'm never going to reconsider whether or not we're in the right place or not. Well, and that's what uh, spokesman Jay Carney came out and said yesterday, um, that the president absolutely supported the troops, um, but that these discussions that, that uh, former Secretary Gates talked about in his book were part of a um, you know deep policy discussion about the way to go in Afghanistan. Yeah. And so President Obama was raising tough questions because he wasn't going to send troops into harm's way without being sure that that was the decision he wanted so to make. So maybe Gates's problem is, as I've been suggesting when we talked about this here, before you came in, that when he walked into the Oval Office with George W. Bush, he was used to getting anything he wanted. When he walked in with Barack Obama and Joe Biden, he was challenged. Yeah, he was, he well, was absolutely what? challenged. You know, <clears throat> can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen, right? He yeah. was challenged. And, and let's talk about uh, uh, Vice President Biden, because he's, he's most critical about Biden, maybe because he feels he can be. And he says, like, Joe Biden has been right about anything for 40 years. Um, Joe Biden is the one who said, you know, maybe because all of al-Qaeda, most of al-Qaeda, is now located in Pakistan, maybe we ought to be thinking about spending some more money and some more time and some more effort and more attention to Pakistan and not to Afghanistan where they're not. He was certainly right about that. Yeah, um, the Joe Biden criticism is what the White House has been pushing back on the most. Um, they feel that he's made the right decisions and he's been part of, of the president's advisory team on all these national national security issues. And so um, they felt like it was unfair the way that uh, Joe Biden was right. characterized in the book.
Yeah, uh, and a guy who's been head of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, head of the Senate Judiciary Committee, a, a major, le- probably probably the leading supporter of Israel in the United States Senate. I mean, he's been a leader on foreign policy for 40 years, and to say, to Gates, Gates to say that he never got anything right all that time, I mean, that's pretty severe criticism. I, I think unf- unfounded. My question is, and I'm not sure we are, and any of us know the answer to this, why would Gates write this book? You know, that that is the question at this point. Um, he could have waited. He didn't have to release it right now. He didn't have to release it. He might it have waited until Obama was out of office. He, he could have. he and just could have not written it. In in some ways, that's um, kind of the, the etiquette of memoirs is to wait until the president is out of office. And in some ways, but um, for whatever reason, whatever is motivating him, he feels like now is the time to release this book, um, potentially because the war in Afghanistan is winding <laughs> down this year. Um, and I would imagine he cares about his legacy there. He cares about about um, the future of, of that region based on what we've done so far there and, and how many people have died in, in Afghanistan. And so I would imagine that some of that motivates him. Um, and he also, you know, the title is duty. That That's what his theme, he kind of comes back back to that um, he felt like well, it was his duty. He owed it to the troops to to serve in that position. I would imagine he feels that he owes it also to release this. Well, speaking this of book. duty, I thought one of the first duties of a member of the military is to follow the chain of and respect the chain of command and follow the chain of command. Yeah. Uh, he violated to to me. One could say he violated the first rule of the military. Uh, he himself, the defense secretary, um, I think, by writing this book, has basically, you know, thrown mud at the commander in chief and and. Uh, I guess I wonder sometimes if Gates maybe thought he was president and forgot that he was working for the president. Hmm. And, you know, it's interesting because the book is only it, it's critical to a point of President Obama. He, know, he said the, some important things thing. about how yeah. um, President Obama had made all the right decisions, right. despite Good his, his yeah. questions mm-hmm. in Afghanistan. Yeah. After, he, after slamming mm-hmm. him. Yeah. Back and forth. Right. Then he ends up in saying, but President Obama made all the right decisions. Yeah, which kind of goes back to your first question, which is how much news is this? It's not necessarily yeah. a bombshell book in the way that other books can be. Um, it's kind of, you know, he talks about the back and forth in, in the Situation Room and the back and forth on various issues. But he also praises um, President Obama specifically for the raid against Osama bin Laden, which I think he said was one of the gutsiest moves by any president he'd seen. 